Hi, my name is Scott Mack, and today we're going to do a teardown of the Command Pro 824. This is Kohler's most unique engine yet with best-in-class horsepower and torque. The electronic fuel injection automatically optimizes for altitude and fuel quality and can save your customer $600 a year on fuel. Plus, there's no carburetor, so there's no carburetor problems or maintenance. Okay, let's get started. Place the engine on a workbench or vertical engine stand, one that's strong enough to support the engine. Drain the engine oil from the crankcase. Use a small screwdriver to remove the pressure hose connector from the fuel pump module. Be careful, fuel may be under pressure. Cover the area with a rag to catch any possible fuel spray. Unplug the electrical connector from the top of the module and set it aside. Slide the fuel line clamps down the hose. Remove the pulse and fuel lines from the impulse fuel pump assembly. Be careful not to break the fittings on the pump when you remove the hose. We developed a special hose removal tool. It's designed to help save your fuel pump when you remove the pressure hose connector. It's part of Kohler's EFI Toolkit. You can order one through your source of supply. Now, use the hose removal tool to remove the vent line from the top of the fuel pump module. Be sure to pull the line straight up so that you don't damage the fitting when you remove it. Route the hoses through the bracket assembly. Next, remove the electrical harness connectors from the engine sensors and components. Look for the red safety latch on the temperature manifold absolute pressure sensor. Release the lock tab and the governor control unit with the small screwdriver. Disconnect the fuses from the fuse holders and the diagnostic plug. Unplug the injectors and the ignition components. Carefully pull and route the wiring harness through the intake manifold assembly. Position the harness so it hangs loose below the throttle body assembly. Remove the three fasteners that hold the valley bracket to the engine block. There are two 8mm screws in the cylinder area and one 10mm screw in the center of the cylinder block. Now, remove the breather hose from the breather hose elbow. Remove the four spark plug boots from the spark plugs. Open and unhook the spark plug wire from the J-hooks. Using an extended T40 Torx driver, remove the four intake manifold mounting screws. Slowly remove the intake manifold assembly and set aside. The manifold has been specifically designed and tuned to deliver maximum power and torque. Set aside the steel manifold gaskets. Remove the three 8mm screws to remove the fuel pump module from the crankcase baffle assembly. Then remove the fuel pump module from the crankcase baffle assembly. When you set aside the fuel pump module, be sure it's standing vertically. If you lay it on its side, residual fuel may leak from the pump vent. Remove the three 10mm screws that hold the baffle to the crankcase. Disconnect the wires from the starter solenoid and remove the two 10mm starter mounting bolts. Set the starter aside. Remove the three T25 torque screws holding the stationary screen from the top of the blower housing.
Next, remove the four 10 mm screws that hold the chopper screen. Grasp the spacers and loose washers located below the screen and set aside. Remove the 8 mm screw from the dipstick tube. Then remove the assembly. Remove the oil cooler screws if equipped. Unplug the black and gray connectors from the engine ECU. Unplug the three wire plug from the voltage regulator. The ECU and voltage regulator will stay attached to the mounting bracket which is attached to the blower housing. This makes it easy to remove the blower housing and bracket as a complete assembly. Then lift the fan off the flywheel. Next, remove the speed sensor screw with your T25 Torx. Then remove the 13 mm flywheel bolt. Make sure to use a strap wrench or gear locking tool to keep the flywheel from turning. Now, remove the flywheel with a flywheel puller. Don't forget to remove the flywheel key. Remember, never use a hammer or impact tool to remove the flywheel. Locate the two bottom valley baffle screws and loosen, but don't remove them. Remove the two upper baffle screws located in the valley of the engine. One of them holds down the O2 sensor connector bracket. To remove the outer number two cylinder baffle, loosen the lower eight millimeter screw. Remove the top eight millimeter screw from the crankcase baffle and remove the eight millimeter screw from the cylinder head. Next, remove the number two crankcase baffle, loosen and remove the two T25 screws. There are two standard and two slotted holes for easy removal. Remove the two eight millimeter screws from the stator assembly. Lift the stator off the mounting bosses. The stator can remain attached to the wiring harness. With the T25 Torx, remove the wiring harness ground eyelet from the number one crankcase baffle mounting screw. Unplug the oil pressure and oil temperature sensors. Carefully remove the wiring harness from the engine. Pay attention to the wire routing so you can reassemble it correctly. Remove the five T25 Torx screws from the breather cover. Pay attention to the orientation of the breather cover gasket. Remove the gasket, then remove the filter from the breather chamber. Again, pay attention to how the filter is placed for reassembly. Next, remove the five eight mm screws that hold the valve covers. One screw has a J-clip for holding one of the spark plug wires. Make note the screw location for correct reassembly. Remove one spark plug from each cylinder head. With your T25 Torx, loosen the center rocker arm adjuster set screws on cylinder number one. Then loosen and remove the rocker arm adjusters to remove the push rods and rocker arms. The T25 set screws must be loosened before turning the adjusters or significant damage could occur. Label each rocker arm accordingly to ensure correct reassembly location. One I for number one intake, one E for number one exhaust, etc. Now repeat the procedure on cylinder number two. Loosen the center rocker arm adjuster set screws with the T25 Torx. Then loosen and remove the rocker arm adjusters to remove the push rods and rocker arms. Remember that the T25 set screws must be loosened before turning the adjusters or adjuster damage could occur. Label each rocker arm for accurate reassembly. 2I for the number two intake, 2E for the number two exhaust, etc. Using a 13 mm deep socket, remove the two rocker arm pivot studs and push rod guide plate from the cylinder head number two. Remove the six cylinder head bolts from the cylinder head. Note the steel head gasket and the two dowel pins. The extended cooling pins help remove heat from the redesigned cylinder head to provide more efficient cooling. The intake and exhaust ports have been redesigned with a gradual curve and the exhaust port has been raised off the cylinder head. Raising the port helps take heat away from the cylinder head to increase performance. 
The piston orientation is indicated by a mark on the top of the piston. The arrow points towards the flywheel and is marked fly. If needed, repeat this procedure on cylinder number one. For engines equipped with an optional oil cooler, slide the two clamps down each hose and carefully remove the cooler. At this point in the disassembly, invert the engine on the stand so the crankshaft PTO is facing upward. Remove the 12 10 mm oil pan bolts. Carefully lift the cover straight up. Some resistance is normal, but lifting the cover straight up offers a path of least resistance. If you angle the cover, binding can occur. If prying is required, find an external area where you can avoid damaging the cover. Don't attempt to pry the cover up on the gasket mating surfaces. This will mar the surface and potentially create a path for oil leaks. Straight gasket surfaces between screws create rigidity and leave less chance for oil leaks. With the oil pan lying on the bench, Remove the oil pump screws with your T25 Torx. Remove the screen, pressure relief ball, and spring. Inspect the oil pump rotor, rotor cavity, and related areas for wear or distress. Carefully lift the camshaft out of the crankcase. Keep an eye on the lifter and tappets since they can now move free or fall out of the tappet bores. The tappets should remain in the exact position they were found, so you may want to remove and mark them accordingly for accurate reassembly. Inspect the tappets and camshaft for any notable wear. Remove connecting rod caps and mark to identify. Remove piston number two. Carefully position piston number one at top dead center. Be sure the flywheel key is removed before carefully lifting the crankshaft out of the crankcase. Check the internal condition of the engine. Remember, this is a bottom-up oil system. Oil delivered from the pump is regulated at 40 PSI and carried through the oil cooler. Most of the cooled oil then travels through the filter for cleaning then back into the engine. A small amount of oil is reduced in pressure to lubricate the valve train. The first bearing lubricated at full regulated pressure is the lower main of the crankshaft. Ports drilled inside the crankshaft deliver oil to the crank pin to lubricate the connecting rods. Finally, oil continues from the crank pin to lubricate the top main bearing.